opened fire on protesters. Among those watching the situation are MPs here. And we can speak now to Rushanara Ali, the co-chair of Parliament's all-party group on democracy in Burma. Good to see you. Thanks for being with us. Um, first of all, just give me your assessment on the, on the current situation in Myanmar, especially given that uh, dozens of protesters have now been killed. Well, the situation has gone from bad to worse. Uh, over the previous period, pre previous years, we saw the Myanmar military presiding over and carrying out acts of genocide. And there's an International Court of Justice case underway on that front. Then they instituted a military coup. And because they got away with genocide, they carried on and they are now punishing the entire population. And we've seen yesterday 38 people were murdered by the military, uh, peaceful protesters who are being uh, attacked by the military. And the big challenge here for the people of Myanmar is that the international community is yet to act together uh, in order to hold the Myanmar military to account and to bring an end to this illegal coup and restore democracy. So we want to hear uh, something from the UN Security Council. Strong words are good, but strong actions are better. Absolutely. And what we need is we need our government to lead uh, on this front because the UK is the pen holder in the UN Security Council. Uh, so I and, and many of my colleagues have been calling on our government to take action, uh, including targeted sanctions, lead a build a coalition uh, of countries towards um, uh, introducing targeted sanctions against the Myanmar military, uh, a global arms embargo, which is absolutely crucial critical uh, because uh, the Myanmar military is uh, it's killing its own people. And of course, we also need our government to support the International Court of Justice case. Uh, and they ought to be looking at referring the Myanmar military to the International Court uh, Criminal Court. Uh, and at the moment, none of these things are happening. Uh, and, and I hope to, it, there's something uh, much stronger coming out of the UN Security Council meeting today. Because if action isn't taken in concert uh, by international, uh, by the international community, then the Myanmar uh, military will continue persecuting its population and uh, not hand over power. Uh, the UK government has, has brought in some sanctions. Are, are you saying you need, we need to see more? Well, the kind of sanctions they've introduced are like travel bans, for instance. Well, that's not really going very far in terms of uh, uh, targeting the military. They need to target their financial interests. So, for instance, the UK, we, we, have, we export about £200 million worth of uh, uh, services and goods. Uh, a vast amount of that is in services. So we need to make sure that companies who are trading with uh, in Myanmar uh, are not trading with military-owned companies. Uh, and then there isn't enough transparency. So uh, on finance, for instance, it's important the FCA looks at these issues and our government uh, is more transparent about where the trade is happening and that sanctions actually follow the money and hit the military mm. in terms of their financial interests. Otherwise, uh, sanctions aren't going to be effective. That's why uh, we've been calling for targeted sanctions against the interests of the military. Uh, and that needs to be, of course, done uh, we're in coordination with other countries uh, on a large scale so that uh, there's a, a bigger impact and it starts to hurt the Burmese military. Otherwise, they're going to carry on yeah. uh, regardless and continue to wield power and uh, deny people their democratic right to a democratically I suppose elected the problem government. Is, sorry to interrupt, we're just running out of time, but I suppose the problem is that the, the military have uh, had to deal with sanctions and isolation in the past um, and uh, it's indicated that uh, it didn't have a huge effect then and it's not going to be swayed by it now. Well, actually, it did have an effect, which is that uh, because of the sanctioning, they, in the end, succumbed to the transition to democracy, albeit it was imperfect. What's happening now is that the international community can't agree on what kind of sanctions, uh, and the, 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 the lack of action and that vacuum is leaving the military to continue to kill its people, to uh, attack peaceful demonstrators, deny the democratically elected government the right to run its country, uh, and until 
until the international community uh, introduces c- uh, c- uh, targeted sanctions and has a concerted effort and a global yeah. arms embargo... And I'm so sorry right to kind of have pressure. to interrupt. We're at the end of the hour. Shana Ali, thank you so much. Uh, Sophie Ridge, all the day's news next.